Hey everyone, welcome to the industry show. I'm your host, Nitin Bajaj, and joining me today is Nancy Duarte. Nancy, welcome on the show. Hey, it's good to be here, Nitin. Pleasure to have you here. Big fan of your work. Thanks for making the time to be with us today. Let's start with who is Nancy? <laughs> well, I, there's what I do and there's who I am. Those aren't always necessarily the same. So True. I'm a CEO, uh, author, and public speaker. I have a company here in the Silicon Valley where we write and produce and help you get ready for your great talk, or we teach you how to do that for yourself. So you can work with us or learn from us. And I'm a grandma. That's my favorite job I've ever had. And I've been married for 42 years to the love of my life. And I think I'm in a really, I don't know, comfortable season in my life, I guess you could say. That's really awesome. And now that we know a little about you, let's play a little game okay. about themes that impact us as a community and a one word response from you, your take on it, whether it's underrated or overrated. Okay. So when you're ready, we'll get started. Sure. Yeah. So let's start with NFTs. Moderately rated. <laughs> <laughs> Neutrally rated. I Anyway. My one word answer was more than a word. <laughs> what about uh, crypto? Underrated. Okay. Uh, metaverse? Overrated. <laughs> uh, startup valuations? They were overrated and now they're, yeah. What about real estate prices? <sighs> overrated. Jeez. Uh, the great resignation. Overrated. Uh, cash. Underrated. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see. Stakeholder capitalism. Underrated. Okay. And uh, stock market prices. Overrated. <laughs> All right. Awesome. That was fun. Thanks for playing along. <laughs> really appreciate it. Now, let's come back to something that's uh, maybe more dear to you. Tell us a little more about. Uh, Duarte Inc., you know, the mission, vision, and also the size and scale of your operations. Yeah, so we exist to transform how people communicate. And mm -hmm. it's been, uh, we started in 1988, and we are just thrilled with where we're at right now. We grew, you know, everyone took a bit of a hit during COVID, and now we're growing, and we're actually kind of bullish on growth. So all the markets and everything, I'm trying to watch that be like, is this the right time to be bullish about growth? Um, mm -hmm. I have a great team. I have a gorgeous team, a gorgeous leadership team. And um, they've been starting to really drive the company. And so, you know, before um, you started recording, we were talking about, I, I'm, I'm excited about how I'm making bets with my time because mm -hmm. I have this great leadership team. Um, and so we have a Duarte method. And that method is getting uh, put into place and systematized in some of the greatest brands in the world, which is so fun. So if you work with us and learn from us, you will actually see a transformation in how your company communicates, which has been just an honor and a privilege. And so uh, we're here in the Silicon Valley, but, or we were, <laughs> and, you know, about two and a half years ago, pre-COVID, three years ago, I guess we made a big intention of um, hiring remote, especially hiring outside of California because it's so litigious and so difficult and blah, 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 blah. And so now we have a large contingency of employees that are remote. And so we are a work from anywhere culture now, just you can work from anywhere, but we are probably going to um, we're going to move out of our massive building and get a tall, small presence here. So there's just a watering hole uh, for people who want to come into town. So it's, it's, it's exciting. I think it's exciting times for us right now. Sounds like it. And lots of change. Yeah, it's been okay. a 30, almost a 35 year journey. So that's. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long time. 1988, technically 87, but we just say 88 because that was the whole full year <laughs> that we were there. Yeah. That is awesome. And, you know, tell us a little more about the why. Right? I mean, you, you touched upon a, a lot of those things, uh, but over the 35 years, has the why changed? And if so, how? Yeah, I, I think the how has changed a mm -hmm. lot. I don't think the why has. Like, we definitely have this ability, you know, to transform your culture, to really sharpen, like sharpen your impact mm -hmm. and scale your influence, right? And so, um, if you think about, you know, the power of the spoken word, 
it, it can make what's invisible and non-existent, you know, visible and, and real. And so um, we have, you know, we have helped uh, escalate, animate, and spread some of the world's most important messages. And I think that clear communicators and clear communication could actually solve a lot. I would say most, almost all, I would say almost all. There's only a small sliver of problems that can't be solved with clear communication. And so it's, it's a real honor to kind of feel like we get to play a role in that. And the other thing that's happening right now is most, um, most jobs, the largest skills gap right now mm -hmm. is around communication. So um, LinkedIn, you know, they put the resumes into their tool and along with the job openings and they look at the gaps of the job openings and the resume gaps to fill it and, and communication, especially spoken word and written word communications are the number one skills gap. So there's so many fronts like what we do, you know, can solve big problems, but what we do can also help you in your career. You know, if you pick up these skills and it's just, fun. I mean, it's just, you know, it's squishy, it's hard to measure, um, but, but we see really incredible results, which has been, which is fun. Yeah. I can imagine. So yeah. if, you, if you look inward at your own business, what's the biggest challenge you're facing? Well, that's a good question. Um, what challenge am I facing? I feel like I've, I'm just coming out of some of those challenges. Mm -hmm. The, um, uh, I think my exec team, it had been off, you know, for about five years, like just one seat, mm -hmm. you know, I kept putting a different person in that one seat. And now that one seat is filled. And it's almost like, it's like putting a rocket booster on, like the alignment is quick. The the communications are clear like that. And, and so that's been really fun and taken um, quite a load off. I'm doing, um, I'm trying to uh, figure out what my next book is. So I'm getting to, um, I've, I've always done my own research. And because I think in the process of research, when you're, you know, branching and digging and choosing mm -hmm. to choose what to research, there, you learn a lot in the research phase. So this will be interesting. So I've spun two um, researchers at USC, which is fun. And I've never done that. And it's a challenge, right? Because I want to jump in and, and be more directive. And I'm letting someone else have that joy of the journey. Um, but we're doing exciting stuff. I think some of the, some of the uh, quote problems are because of opportunity. Um, we're building out uh, new tools and new things that we've never done before um, that I can't speak of yet because uh, our competitors copy us all the time. And, and that's really been fun and, and we have great people leading it. And we're doing such innovative things. I have paid a fortune in professional consultants, mm -hmm. uh, just a fortune. But you know what, I, I've done it before and it, and it didn't work out. And, and we, we've done it on a couple of fronts this year and it's just what we needed to get unstuck because none of us have done this great new glorious thing. And um, it's been fun to walk with really smart people to help us unlock this new thing. So I don't know, that sound more like totally awesome problems that we're having right now. <laughs> Well, you kind of stole my next question a little bit and, you know, uh, put some pixie dust on it, but I understand within the limited constraints of uh, what you can share, what's the most exciting opportunity you're targeting? Uh, the most exciting. <laughs> you know what, it, this may sound like a dereliction of duty on my part as the CEO, but um, our business is always, you know, we publish, I publish books, we publish books, I have other authors that publish books, and it creates really great air cover and the phone just always rings and the mm -hmm. inquiry forms are always filled out. And it, it's always been a nice inbound flow, enough for us to grow every year. And so I never felt this hardcore pressure to build a sales team. And so we built a sales team. Like I hired 20 salespeople wow. and um, have now a leader in that seat who's doing this really great job. So it's this really big risk, you know, and, and we assigned accounts and we're like, go chase them. So we've never been the pursuer. We've always been the pursued in a way. And so that's going to be really interesting. It's a big, expensive experiment, mm -hmm. uh, but everyone else has a sales team, you know? And um, so it's just almost like, you know what, we're not going to reach our goal of training transforming a million people like we have to be a much bigger company and it, it dawned on me like if we keep blathering out one side of our mouth that we're going to reach a million people 
but our revenue numbers don't make it look like we're ever going to get there. Mm -hmm. And so this is in service of kind of keeping our promise of wanting to transform a million people. And so that's been, um, it's been really fun. It's been really fun and um, it'll shift the culture and it'll shift everything. And um, I'm just glad I'm not the executive doing it all. <laughs> I have someone Sorry. glorious who's doing it all. And, that's and true. it's really fun, yeah. That's amazing, that's super exciting. Now yeah. let's take a look back and in the rear view mirror, if you will, mm -hmm. and uh, talk about Two experiences, one that really worked out and, you know, maybe you want to show off and brag a little bit. Another that didn't work out as you had planned and became maybe a lesson learned. Yeah, so something, something that worked out really, really well, I think, um, as an entrepreneur was uh, focusing solely on presentations. So mm -hmm. when we started, started as technical illustrators, which is, you know, a sure. gateway drug into presentations in a way. Mm -hmm. My husband is the illustrator. I was account mm -hmm. strategy and all that stuff. And, um, I, you know, I think presentations found me. It wasn't like I hotly pursued them. And so we started as eons ago, lo longer ago than most of your listeners were born. And, um, and so we had kept being in denial that we were a presentation company because back then it was reviled. Like presentations were reviled. No agencies did it. Everyone kicked it over to me because it was like the bottom of the barrel and all that stuff. And so we even had our website. We had five different creative services and we put presentations last because we were like, oh, and we do this, but it was the bulk of our business. And so in 2000, uh, Jim Collins' book, Good to Great, came mm -hmm. out. He has in there the hedgehog concept, mm -hmm. which says if there's one thing you can do, you could be best in the world at, be passionate about, and be profitable at, mm -hmm. do only that one thing. So here we were in the dot-com downturn, and I shuttered four out of five of our services, and we went big on presentations. And that was that was the smartest thing I did. And what's interesting is, seems like almost every downturn, every economic crisis, mm -hmm. I do something counterintuitive. Most people would have probably added 10 services just to cast sure. a bigger net, but I, I trimmed them all down and, and that was the smartest thing I did. And it was a weird time to have done it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that really <laughs> worked out here. We are what 22 like years later, and we have the defining works for that medium. And we redefine the medium, to be honest. I mean, we really defined the pre redefine the presentation medium. Um, there's been a lot of hard things. Um, I can't really point, um, I can't really point to one thing I would say that's above all, but I'll tell a story that mm -hmm. it was a season that was really hard. We had a customer who was a VP at IBM and he came over into the, uh, what I'll call the Apple ecosystem, Apple, HP, mm -hmm. and, um, IBM had done a consortium at one point in time years ago. And I remember, uh, when I was first introduced to him, it was like, hey, meet VP. I won't say his name. Like, hey, meet VP, so and so. And he's fired every presentation person he's ever worked with, right? <laughs> and right then, I was like, oh, I'm going to throw down the gauntlet, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to push through this. And it was hard. I mean, it was hard. It was so bad. Like, we would be in one meeting, and he would say one thing, and then the next meeting, we we would, you know pitch it back to him and he'd be like, I don't know where you're getting this information. This is dumb. You know, and we were just like, oh, I, to the point where it was like, well, I might just take all of our meetings because, you know, but he would get this amnesia and yell and scream at people and at me. <laughs> and what was interesting is I endured it and he became, I became, you know, his beloved presentation lady. But what's interesting is that working around how to get to work with him, working around how to present things to him in a way that he would calm down or whatever mm -hmm. was the genesis for Resonate for my body of work. So when he would walk in the room, if you presented slides to him linearly and he was expecting his favorite little pet slide to be at slide three and it wasn't, it derailed the whole meeting for up to two hours. But that's when I realized if I print out his slides, tape them, he can see the big structure across the top mm -hmm could see all the supporting points and he could see that his pet slide was at slide eight, not at slide three, but he could see it. It, it, it just made so much more of a, um, a constructive meeting. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I mean, if that's what life is, right? If, if we are dealt really difficult things and hardships, if we get 
if there's resolution and it's a happy ending, it means mm -hmm. you learned something valuable and it made the journey worth it. And I feel like that was a very difficult person to work with, but it made the journey worth it because it bore fruit that have helped a lot of other people. So um, anyway, that's, that's my hardship story. I, I, I don't know, it'd take too long to think about really dramatic ones. <laughs> <laughs> And thanks for sharing this one. I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, that's a good transition into my favorite part of the show, which is the one line life lessons. Hmm. These are simple, profound, and I find them, some of them at least, to be life changing. I would love to hear some of your one line life lessons. Yeah, I think it's something I, we raised our kids, and I think they turned out beautiful. It's, Follow your peace and your passion and you'll find your destiny. That is what I would say it is. And both my kids, even though they, you know, none of them want to be me or do what I do. Um, they're walking in their destiny and they love what they do. So it's really, it's gorgeous. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Do you have other life lessons you would like to share with us? I have oh, so many. <laughs> we'll take as many. I think in business, um, in business, we have a value that's uh, choose your reputation over revenue. And um, again, in an economic, weird economic season, mm -hmm. we fired massive client. Like it was 15% of our revenue. I kept all the employees. It was a oh. conscious decision, 15% of our revenue. And I was like, you know what, CEO, wow. Like team, no way. They, you know, just the demands their lack of planning the team has to work all night work on weekend come in on thanksgiving you have to fly you know it's just like wow you know and and through all the conversations there was not going to be any sort of transformation and so we're like bye, -bye. i don't care so it's like choosing and that's that's a, actually an example of choosing my people over profit but we but we choose rep, reputation over revenue so i also let a client go it's a half a million dollar account when the, when my team showed up to present like present to them this is what we did this is the creative this is how we solved it they, after the meeting they pulled me aside and said um the ceo is offended when someone shows up with tattoos or long hair so we need you to show up with a different team and I, and I was shocked, right? I got back to the office and sent an email saying that we're not a fit anymore. And it was an annually recurring account. So that's mm -hmm. just one of those things where you're just like, yikes, like, you know, mm -hmm. let's just narrow it down to people who treat us like partners, who we love to work with. And um, yeah, so I, I think you can post a value like that. Like I choose people over profit, but People want to see it like they want to see it demonstrated when they're suffering and you're you're and if I was to force them to endure with this mm -hmm. client, that's not choosing people over profit. So, um, yeah, it's been so, an it's been an interesting ride the last few years. It's been fun. It's been hard and amazing all at the same time. But that's what leadership is about. Right? And yeah. you, you've extracted the best and enabled so many people, so many lives have been transformed. Yeah. And I can imagine it couldn't have been easy. I mean, you love it, but love it. It's, it's not easy. It's not. I mean, I do think COVID was hard and communicating during COVID. And yeah. um, I really had to show solidarity because I was in it with them. And um, it's 150 lives. You know, it's non I don't think that's that trivial. I mean, there's a lot of other people mm -hmm. probably listening that have much larger organizations, but um, when you have an organization who, what, who, when one of your values is belonging, creating belonging when everyone gets scattered across the country and world, and, and how do you keep sustaining that promise? So um, it's been good. I think we've emerged way stronger and gorgeous. My team is gorgeous. So I've, I have amazing employees. Yeah. That's really awesome. Nancy, thanks again for sharing those online life lessons. And for our audience, we have an entire collection at onelinelifelessons.com. And wherever you socialize digitally, we'll have Nancy's one-liners there pretty soon. Nancy, thank you once again for making the time to be with us and sharing your journey and your lessons with us. We really, really appreciate it. It was fun. I appreciate you having me. It was great. <laughs>